Hey everybody, in this video I'll be playing Frostgrave's The Lockbox Scenario, which will be the seventh battle for my Frostgrave second edition campaign. Hey everybody, I'm Alan with Bricks and Blocks Gaming the channel that plays tabletop games using toy bricks and blocks and discusses the rules and strategies that build the foundation for those games. The lockbox scenario is the seventh new scenario from the Frostgrave 2nd edition book, and facing off in this battle will be Velius the Summoner against King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. The last time these two warbands met up was in the Summoning Bell scenario, which saw a lot of figures fall in combat at the hands of their opponents and from the flood of uncontrolled monsters that showed up in that scenario. Vilius is looking for some revenge after being pummeled by grenades in that battle, and the Knights of the Round Table are still just looking for that Holy Grail. Going forward with my campaign, I've decided to limit all of my battles to 8 turns, just to keep the battles from dragging on toward the end. Any figures carrying treasure at the end of those 8 turns will secure them for their warband unless they're in combat. In that case, the existing combat will continue until the treasure carrier is no longer in combat, either from pushing out of the combat or from falling in combat. Any unclaimed treasure tokens, including any just dropped in a final combat, can potentially be secured as normal at the end of the battle. Each player with figures still on the board can roll to claim them. They need a 15 plus to do so, and if both players successfully roll to claim the same token, the warband with the most figures on the board gets it. Now let's get to the bricks and blocks of Frostgrave 2nd Edition's The Lockbox Scenario. Velius is carrying his new Staff of Fight Plus One, and both he and Celia are now wearing Gloves of Casting. They're joined by their new Infantryman Cyclops, two Rangers, their Bear, and three Thugs, while their Marksman is back at their base recovering from wounds inflicted by an arrow and an axe. The Summoner is level 6, with 140 experience points saved up, and has 20 gold crowns in his vault. King Arthur and his apprentice, Sir Bedivere, are joined by Sir Lancelot the Barbarian, Sir Galahad the Man of Arms, Sir Robin the Treasure Hunter and his minstrel the Bard, Patsy the Thief, Tim the Tracker with that Ring of Teleportation, and the Rabbit of Carbonog the Snow Leopard. And the Black Beast of Arg, a bear, is sitting this battle out due to injuries sustained from a wraith. The Lord of Camelot is level 7, with 105 experience points saved up, and 60 gold crowns in his vault. For dice assignments, Vilius will use his usual white die, and for King Arthur I got him a new yellow die, so he'll be using that this battle. We'll start by rolling to see who chooses sides first, and we will have King Arthur choosing his side of the table. This scenario takes place in an old warehouse. So I'm saying that there's a wall that goes all the way around the outside of it, but there's cracks and whatnot uh, in the walls so that figures can leave off any edge whenever they want. Uh, there's some pillars scattered about the board and kind of some rocky outcroppings that are, in theory, go all the way up to the roof. They're supporting the roof, so no figure can climb to the top of those. I'm not sure why they'd want to, but that's why there's no treasure tokens placed on any of those. I included the train track from my minecart scenario just because I think it looks cool and kind of adds to this warehousey feel, although the minecarts won't be moving in this scenario. Over here, part of the roof has caved in, that's why there's some snow inside this, and enough of the debris has kind of caused a hole down here, and that's why water pooled down there and is now frozen over, so that'll be rough terrain climbing around on that. Uh, watery or icy area. This scenario calls for no actual centralized treasure tokens, but rather four standard tr uh, treasure tokens are placed like normal. So we've got one, two, three, and then four up over here. And this scenario also calls for some markers to be placed. King Arthur has placed four barrel markers on the board, while Velius has placed four treasure chest markers on the board, and their opponent is trying to get to the markers that they placed. Uh, one treasure chest and one barrel will have essentially a centralized treasure token in it, while the others will have some random things that we'll be rolling for. So Velius placed his treasure chests here, here, over here on that ice outcropping, and then one, 
right back there. And the barrels were placed uh, one right there, one here on this snow outcropping, one down here in the middle of this rough terrain, and then one more over here. With the markers, they have to be placed at least eight inches from the deployment edges and six inches from each other, but it doesn't say how close they can be or far away they have to be from the neutral edges. So that's why some of them are right by the neutral edges there. I do have some random barrels and other uh, brown terrain that maybe it wasn't a good idea because it might look kind of confusing, but it kind of looks cool because there's just lots of extra stuff on the board. And King Arthur will be setting up on this side while Velius will be setting up on that side. So again, Arthur is trying to get to the treasure chests that are on the other side and Velius is trying to get to the barrels that are on this side. Normally the way it's supposed to work is that after you've placed the markers, you're supposed to secretly select one of them to be the token that your opponent is actually searching for. But since I'm playing against myself, I'm going to randomize it. So whenever a figure searches one of these markers, they will draw a card from their own My Little Pony playing card deck. And if they get a Applejack, a Rarity, or Rainbow Dash, it'll be randomized what they find. But if they happen to draw the Queen Celestia card, they will find their treasure that they are searching for. For out-of-game spells, neither King Arthur nor Sir Bedivere can cast Animal Companion because they currently have Animal Companions. Even though the Black Beast of Arg is wounded for this battle and won't be joining them, uh, he is part of the warband, so they cannot cast another animal companion. And then we will do Raise Zombie. Uh, Arthur on a 12, he got that, so the Black Knight will be joining them. And I almost forgot about Familiar, so Arthur on a 10, nope. And Bedivere on a 10 minus 2, nope. For Velius and Celia, they can cast his animal companion. Velius already has his bear, so Celia will try for her polar bear, 14 minus 2 and she does not get that. Next, they'll do Reveal Secret. Vilius will be a 16. He's got a plus two because of the tower. Failure and Celia on just a straight 16. She also failed. And it's kind of fitting in this battle that both warbands have a wounded soldier. We've got the Black Beast of Arg for Arthur and the Marksman for Vilius that will not be joining them this battle. King Arthur is set up over here on this side of the board. He's got Patsy the Thief over here, Bedivere the Apprentice, Tim the Tracker with the Ring of Teleportation. We've got Brave Sir Robin, who is now a treasure hunter with his minstrel, the Bard. We have King Arthur with Sir Galahad, the Man of Arms, the Rabbit of Carbonog, the Black Knight, and Sir Lancelot the Brave. For Vilius over here, who is carrying a staff of Fight Plus One and is still wearing a pair of gloves of casting. He's over here with the infantry cyclops, two thugs. Here we have Celia who also has gloves of casting now with the bear, the thug, and their two rangers are set up over here. For Arthur's strategy, they always want to try to find the central treasure token to see if they can find the holy grail. So they'll be doing all they can to get down here to the treasure chests that are over here. And Velius' plan, as always, is just to destroy his enemy. So they will try to just charge down the board to take out as many knights of the round table as they can and maybe pick up some treasures along the way. As I mentioned in the intro, my games are going to go just eight rounds. So we'll go ahead and start with some initiative. We got one, two, 16. Velius is going first. Vilius will start out, he'll activate by himself, and he will run six inches right up here. And from there, he is going to attempt to summon a Shadow Warrior. He casts on a nine, and he's going to use his Gloves of Casting to get a plus five to this roll. Uh, that is a 22, so he passed that by 13. And succeeding by 13 gets him a Greater Shadow Warrior. So that will go right up here behind him. That should make up for their missing marksman. King Arthur over here is going to attempt to cast Possess on the rabbit. Casting on a 13, failure by eight. He will take one point of damage. 
Then he will move six inches up underneath this platform, right behind this barrel for some cover. Over to Celia, she will start out by making a move. She'll activate by herself around here to kind of be behind this building. And she will try to cast Summon Shadow Warrior. She'll use her Gloves of Casting, which give her a plus five. She's an apprentice, so minus two. So she has a plus three total to this. And that is a 22. She needed a nine, so she gets a Greater Shadow Warrior as well. So here's her Greater Shadow Warrior. It'll pop up right in front of her. And it's too tall for the terrain. Sir Bedivere will activate by himself and run over here on a single move. And from there, he can see the Rabbit of Carbonog and he will cast Possess on a 13 with a minus two. And that is a seven. So he failed that by six. He takes one point of damage. So two failed Possesses and two very successful summons. Uh, I think it's obvious who the summoners are here. Uh, over to Velius' soldier phase, we'll start with these guys. This thug here will run over here up this ladder and to right here on a double move. This thug will run around here on a double move. And the Cyclops infantryman will run right down the middle here to right there where he's got some cover behind that barrel. For the Shadow Warriors, starting with Velius' Warrior, it will run through here, double moving to right there, and then Celia's will double move up here, come over here to start heading towards some of these markers over here. The bear and this thug will both run right down the middle. Seems like I've said a lot of figures are moving down the middle. I guess this actually is the middle. The thug wants to head to that treasure and that bear wants to cause some damage. Over here to these rangers. Knowing their enemy has the grenade spell, they will spread out. This one will run over here to the middle of this room while the other one will kind of zigzag around here, right in between, right next to that pillar there to King Arthur's soldier phase. They'll start with having Tim the Tracker run up here. And from there, he will fire an arrow or a fireball at this Shadow Warrior. He's got one piece of intervening terrain. So with the terrain and movement, he would get a plus two, but then he's large, so he gets a minus two. So he's got his normal plus five against the shoot of plus two. Uh, that is a 15 against 12 armor, so that is 3 damage on that major Shadow Warrior. And King Arthur's team wants to kind of stick together, so Patsy's going to run up here uh, in front of Tim the Tracker, so they can potentially both end up in combat. And then Brave Sir Robin and his Minstrel will run over here. And they'll end up right here, since they had to run through some rough terrain, they can't get too far. Then Sir Galahad and the White Rabbit will both run underneath this platform. And in their turns there, ready to intercept this Shadow Warrior. The Black Knight will run underneath this ladder for some bad luck. And end his turn right there on a double move. Then Sir Lancelot the Barbarian will run up here, kind of against that building. We'll roll initiative for the next round, and we've got it going to King Arthur. King Arthur, down here by this barrel, will start out by launching a grenade by the feet of this Shadow Warrior. Casting on a 10, he got that. This will be a plus three against plus five. That is an 18 against 16, so that is six damage. And since Arthur's got a fight of plus five, he's gonna come out and come over here He's ready for some combat. Vilius will then move from one pillar to the next. So he's right down there against that pillar. And from there, he's going to attempt to cast Plague of Insects on Tim the Enchanter. Casting on a 10. That is a failure by five. And he'll just let that fail, taking one point of damage. 
Next, Sir Bedivere will activate with Brave Sir Robin, and Robin will run up this ladder over here to this treasure right here, and he will pick that up. And in this scenario, no random encounters spawn. And then Sir Bedivere will run up here in front of Tim, and from there, he will launch a grenade over here next to Velius. And actually looking at the angle, he'll need to be in front of Tim so that from there he's got a clear shot right down there next to Vilius. Casting on a 10 with a minus two, uh, he'll empower that for one. Now, even though Vilius here is behind this, this pillar, uh, for a grenade, you base it on actually where it lands. So since he puts it there, it's actually going to hit this uh, Cyclops also. Um, so Vilius will not get the cover from that terrain. Vilius does get a plus one though because Bedivere moved. So with that and his staff, he's a total of plus six against plus three for the grenade. And uh, he blocks that now against the infantryman plus uh, four because of the movement against plus three. And that's an 11, so that doesn't get past the infantry cyclops armor. For Celia's turn, she is going to move over to here. And from there, she is going to attempt to cast Plague of Insects on Sir Bedivere. On a 10 with a minus 2, that is a 15, so that is successful. For King Arthur's soldiers, starting with the Black Knight, it will come up here next to this treasure token and pick it up with its second action. Then Sir Lancelot will run down here. You can get right to here on a double move. Then Patsy over here will just double move into combat, kicking over Sir Bedivere. And he will just stand there in combat with this Shadow Warrior. The Bard will run up here in front of Sir Bedivere on a double move. Then Tim will run over here. Next, Sir Galahad and the Rabbit will both run up here to engage this Shadow Warrior. And unfortunately, they both had to use double moves to get there, so their turn is over. For Velius' soldier phase, they'll have this thug do a double move down here. Again, they're going for the barrels. Then this other thug up here will come over to this treasure. And he'll pick that up. Then this thug will run over here. His movement's really slowed down by the ice, and then he has to climb. but. He can use his full 9-inch double move to get right up there next to the treasure, but he has not picked that up yet. This bear will double move up here into combat with Sir Galahad. Over here, this ranger will do a 7-inch single move to there and then fire an arrow at the Black Knight. Since the Black Knight is not carrying any weapons, technically, it does not get the minus 1 encumbrance penalty to its fight. But the ranger did move, so it gets a plus two against plus two shoot. It's a nine shoot, so that is a failed arrow. Then the other ranger here will fire an arrow at Sir Lancelot. There is one piece of intervening terrain. Lancelot's a plus five against plus two shoot, and he blocks that. Then this ranger is going to move seven inches through here. And then back over here to the front side of the board, this infantry cyclops will do a single move next to Patsy and club him with support. Cyclops is a plus five against plus one for the thief. So has a 17 with a plus two damage. That is nine damage. Patsy is down to one. The Shadow Warrior that's in combat with him will also attack, so he will be a plus seven with support against minus one now for Patsy because he's wounded. So that is a 14 against 10, so that is four, well, plus two damage for the Shadow Warrior, so that's plenty of damage. The Shadow Warrior takes him down and then will run over here into combat with the Minstrel. Next over here, 
Uh, this Shadow Warrior will attack Sir Galahad. No support bonuses are given because each team has two warriors in the fight, so it's a plus five for the Shadow Warrior against plus three for Galahad. That is a 21 with plus two damage, so a 23 minus 12 armor is 11 damage. And Sir Galahad is wounded down to one health. There's no uncontrolled monsters on the board, so we'll roll for initiative for the next round. And King Arthur's going first, 10 to five. King Arthur right down here is gonna start out by launching a grenade right down here by this ranger. Casting on a 10, a nine, he'll empower that for one. Plus three shooting attack against plus two defense. And that does no damage. Then King Arthur is going to run over here to try to support this Black Knight as it tries to escape with this treasure. Velius, who's down here between these buildings, will activate with the infantry Cyclops and he'll start by sending the Cyclops over here to engage Sir Robin's Minstrel. And from there he will attack with the support of the Shadow Warrior. With support, the Cyclops is a plus five against plus two for the Bard. Uh, he got a nine to a four, so he wins, but no damage. And even with the plus two damage that the infantry Cyclops deals, the Bard has 11 armor due to light armor, so no damage there. Then Velius is going to attempt to cast Leap on the Cyclops to send him up here by Robin. Leap casts on an eight. And he got that. Leap can't send the soldier into combat, but he can go within an inch. So as soon as Sir Robin tries to move, the Cyclops can snap into combat. And Velius is content just staying right where he's at. Sir Bedivere, who currently has Plague of Insects cast on him, will activate with the Minstrel, and he'll have the Minstrel attack. The Minstrel is a plus two against the Shadow Warriors plus five. He wins the combat, eight to seven, so he'll push this guy out of combat and just stand his ground. Then Sir Bedivere is going to launch a grenade uh, right behind the Shadow Warrior. Sir Bedivere can't attempt to resist Plague of Insects until after his activation is complete. So he will cast this Normally on a 10, but he's got a minus two for being an apprentice and another minus two because of the plague. So minus four needs a 10, so that is a one. Failure by nine, he takes one point of damage. Things are not looking good over here, so Sir Bedivere is now going to bravely r start running away to right there on a single move. Sir Bedivere will then try to break the plague of insects. Uh, so he's got a plus two will and the target number was a 15. As a 12, he will empower that. He, uh, spellcasters can emp empower their will roll for three, so it breaks the spell. Next for Celia over here, she is going to make a six inch move over to here, right against that pillar. And she is going to cast heal on her shadow warrior. And heal has no effect on undead or constructs, but doesn't say it can't target demons. Casting on a 12 with a minus two. So that is a nine, she'll empower that for three. That Shadow Warrior was down to nine, and so now it's back up to 14. And Celia is down to 10. For Arthur's soldier phase, Tim the Tracker is going to start by running around here, avoiding this thug. And he can get right up against this on seven inches. And then he'll go ahead and use his second action to check that marker. Actually, he'll just fire an arrow because if this does end up being the treasure, he's probably going to get overrun and that treasure is going to get taken anyway. So he will fire an arrow. Since he moved, the thug gets a uh, extra plus one. So it's plus two shoot, plus three defense. And that arrow misses. Brave Sir Robin is left with little choice here. Uh, he's just going to engage the... Cyclops and then attack. So he's not encumbered because he only is carrying a dagger. So he's a plus one against the Cyclops is plus three. And he wins. He gets an 11. So against 10. So he will push the Cyclops out of combat. So that pushes him out of 
combat, but he had to move to get into combat. So he's used both his actions and he'll have to just sit there. The rabbit and Sir Galahad will just stay in combat to keep those guys busy. Over here, the black knight will move three inches on a double move with his treasure token. Right there to go under the ladder again. Then we'll have Sir Lancelot. They do want to get this these markers, but they want to also make sure these rangers don't overrun them. So he's going to come over here and attack this ranger. Besides, getting in combat is what Sir Lancelot likes to do. He has a plus four against the rangers, plus two. And he got a five against four, so that's a failure. Sir Lancelot's combined total would be plus five against the plus four, so technically he would win, but he rolled a one, which brings up a little rules question. The book does include a rule about an uh, unmodified rule of a one always being a failure, but this is in relation to stat rules. So I know that the fight stat is a stat, but usually that would be considered a combat rule, where stat rules it's talking about here are when you're doing something against a target number. So I'm not exactly sure that this would apply here during combat. Uh, so I'm just kind of curious how uh, you, the viewers, play this rule if you use this, that any one that's rolled is always a failure, or if it's just when it's a stat rule. It does go on later to talk about combat rules in regards to the maximum of a plus 10 modifier, but it doesn't talk about combat rules up here. So let me know in the comments how you play this rule. It won't really make too much difference, just if the ranger had won, he probably would have pushed Lancelot out of combat, but since I'm playing that Lancelot won it, uh, he will stay in combat. For Velius' soldier phase, this thug up here carrying this treasure will do a double move by climbing down this wall and then coming right over to here. Total of four and a half inches. This thug over here will use one action to pick up the treasure. He hadn't picked it up yet, and then he will just run, climb down here and get across this rough terrain. And uh, surprising, the Legos guys can fit kind of perfectly right between these tracks. Then we'll go over here and we'll have the bear attack Sir Galahad, who is wounded. No support bonuses are given here, so it's gonna be a plus four for the bear against plus one for Sir Galahad. But Sir Galahad wins with an 18 against 12 armor, dealing six damage to the bear, and he will push him out of combat. Actually, he won't push him out of combat. He'll stay there to keep him tied up. Then the Shadow Warrior will attack Sir Galahad. This is a plus five against plus one. And uh, we've got an 18 that is with plus two damage. And he only had one health left. The Shadow Warrior is still alive. And Sir Galahad goes down. Over here, this ranger here will run over here to right here and will then fire an arrow at the black knight it's a plus two shoot but since he moved the black knight has a plus two to his defense uh, that's a 10 so it doesn't get past the 12 armor this shadow warrior here will come up and engage the minstrel plus five against plus two and he gets a seven against a six so he will stay in combat. Right up front here, this thug will turn around to come into combat with Tim and attack. Thug's a plus two, the tracker is a plus one. Uh, Tim wins with a 15. He deals minus one damage because of the staff, so that is four damage against the thug, and he will push him out of combat. And their last soldier is this ranger that's in combat with Sir Lancelot, and he will choose to just keep Lancelot busy there. Once again, there are no uncontrolled monsters on the board, so we'll roll for initiative for the next round. And it goes once again to King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. The Knights of the Round Table like those holy hand grenades of Antioch, so King Arthur will launch one right behind this ranger. Casting on a 10. Failure by 7 he will take one point of damage. After that dud of a hand grenade, King Arthur will just run over and engage the ranger so that it is unable to shoot at the Black Knight. Then to Velius's turn, he is going to do a single move up over to here 
And then he is going to cast a wall kind of right over here behind Sir Bedivere. It's just within 10 inches. Casting on a 12, and he got a 12. So a six inch long wall pops up right behind Sir Bedivere, blocking two paths of escape for him and the escape route for Sir Robin as well. For Sir Bedivere, with that escape route blocked, he is going to run up this ladder right up to here. And from there, he is going to toss a grenade behind the Cyclops. Being free of the Plague of Insects, he casts on a 10 with a minus 2. That is a 13, so he got that. He moved, so the Cyclops gets a plus 1, so it's a plus 4 defense against plus 3 shooting attack. It's a uh, nine or 10. Rerolling this, and that's only an 8, so no damage from that grenade. For Celia, she's going to continue her healing ways and cast healing on the bear. Again, casting on a 12 with a minus 2. That's an 8. She will empower that for 4, putting her down to 6 health. The bear is back up to 13 health, and then Celia is just going to run up here behind the Shadow Warrior. I had considered casting a bridge across here instead of throwing the grenade, but I knew that this Cyclops would eventually just follow him over there. So instead, Robbins is going to have to try to climb down and escape this way. So on a double move while he's carrying this treasure, he can get to right there. And I just remembered that Sir Robin is a treasure hunter now, not a thief. So his previous attack roll against the Cyclops would have actually dealt two damage because it would have been a plus three, not a plus one. Right up front here, Tim the Enchanter will fire an arrow at that thug. Plus two against plus two. And that arrow misses. Then he will use his seven inch move to actually get right up against this treasure chest. And actually he can only get to right about here. And we'll see if the thug ends up following him up there. The minstrel will decide to just stay in combat with that shadow warrior. Then over to here, the black knight is going to once again run underneath this ladder. And three whopping movement units will get him right there. Then we'll jump over here to Lancelot and he will attack that ranger. It's a plus four against plus two for the ranger. And the lots of ones here. The ranger gets a 17 uh, against 10 armor, so that is seven damage on the barbarian. The ranger would push Lancelot out of combat, but Lancelot could then just move right back in, so he'll stay there. And then over here, the rabbit of Carbonog that's blending in with the snow will just stay in combat with that shadow warrior to tie him up. For Velius' soldiers, they'll start with having this thug do a double move with his treasure. He'll kind of come around this corner here just to make sure that Tim doesn't try to shoot him in the back. The other treasure carrying thug will run over here with his treasure since he's treasure carrying. Right there. Then we'll have the Shadow Warrior attack the rabbit. Plus five against plus three. Shadow Warrior gets a 24. Snow Leopards have 10 armor and 10 health, so 14 damage plus two uh, takes it out. So that goes down. We'll just throw it over here onto the ice so we can see it there. Then the Shadow Warrior will run over here to this marker and stand against that so that it can try to investigate that on its next turn. Then this bear is going to double move into combat with Brave Sir Robin, as will this Cyclops. It can't quite get to him on a single move. Over here, we'll have the other Shadow Warrior attack the Minstrel. Plus five against a plus two. That is a 15 plus two damage. That is against 11 armor. That is six damage. That puts the Minstrel down to five health. And then he's just gonna push the Minstrel back an inch and then move back into combat just to advance himself a little bit. See if his head can fit through there. There are two Rangers, one engaged with Arthur, one engaged with, with uh, Lancelot. We'll just stay there because they're a bit outclassed. And then just over here to this thug, they like to destroy their enemies, but he is a thug. He wants to figure out what is in these markers. So it'll take him a double move to move around here, right up against this. For initiative, 
We've got King Arthur's team going first. King Arthur will start by attacking the ranger that he's in combat with. King Arthur has a plus five fight against plus two for the ranger. And he just got a 22 and he is wielding a two-handed sword. That is 13 damage on the light armored ranger. He goes down. And Arthur still wants to try to get that holy grail so he will run up here on his single move. For Vilius, he will activate with both of the Shadow Warriors, and we'll start with this one with the White Horns opening up this barrel to see what's in it. I've shuffled up this pile, and if he draws Queen Celestia, this will be the treasure token. Uh, he gets Applejack. So we'll roll a d20 to see what happens. A seven. Seven is the crate explodes. Treat the crate as though it were an explosive ruin that just detonated. Explosive Rune has a 2 inch range and Velius is just beyond that 2 inches So we'll see what happens against that Shadow Warrior 5 magical shooting attack against the Shadow Warriors plus 5 The Warrior gets, uh, well that is a 23 or 22 against 11 So against 12 armor that is 10 damage well, It's a good thing that Celia healed him because he would have been dead uh, however, he is wounded now, so he will not get his second action. Then the other Shadow Warrior will attack the Minstrel. Plus 5 against plus 2. It's a 19. And we will... Well, it landed right on this uneven line, but uh, we'll still call that a 17. So 17 plus 2, it's 19 against 19. Both figures score a hit. The Minstrel was down to 5, it takes actually 10 points of damage because of the plus 2. And the Shadow Warrior is down to 5, so it's not quite wounded. Then it will run right over here to the bottom of this ladder. Then Velius will cast Heal on the Shadow Warrior. On a 12, failed by 8, he'll let that fail, taking 1 point of damage. Then Velius will just run right up here, slowly advancing, but keeping space in case he throws a grenade at him. And Sir Bedivere will run right over here. And from there he can see right down here, and he's going to throw a grenade right here. Uh, Celia and this Shadow Warrior are within three inches of each other, so they'll both be in range of that grenade. Casting on a 10 with a minus 2. He got that. That's a 16 total. Against the Shadow Warrior, he's wounded, so he's only a plus 3. Against plus 3, uh, he defends that. And I just remembered that since Sir Bedivere moved, there's actually a bonus for uh, Velius's team. Uh, so Celia will have a plus 3, which is normally a plus 2 fight against plus 3 shoot. But that's a 20, so that is 10 damage against Celia. She was down to six, so she is out of the battle. For King Arthur's soldiers, first the Black Knight is going to try to get away with this treasure, but on only three inches, he can only get to right here. So he needs another turn to get off the board there. From there, we'll jump over here to Sir Lancelot, where he will attack this ranger. Lancelot is a plus four against plus two defense. Uh, that is a 23 with plus 2 damage. I think these rangers need to stick to shooting things. And on a 6 inch move, Sir Lancelot can come through here, climb up part of this, and get right next to this treasure. Well, treasure chest. We'll find out what's in there on his next turn. Speaking of which, we'll jump over here to Tim the Enchanter, who will come over here next to this treasure chest and use his second action to investigate what's inside it. And King Arthur has his own deck of cards. Let's see what they get. Uh, they get Rainbow Dash, so that is uh, something random coming. And we've got a one. A one is to replace the crate with an imp. So one of Zygomor's imps just popped out of that treasure chest and is in combat with Tim. And down here, Brave Sir Robin will just kind of cower there in the corner and do nothing this turn. For Velius' team, he'll have the bear attack Brave Sir Robin. With support, the bear's a plus six against plus three. Uh, it's a 17 for Robin. Rerolling the bear, plus six is only a nine. 
Against 12 armor, that is 5 damage on the bear. Brave Sir Robin bravely pushes the bear out of combat, but then the bear returns to combat. And then the Cyclops will attack. Cyclops will be a plus 5 against plus 3. Uh, so the Cyclops wins. That is a 13 with plus 2 damage against 11 armor. That's 4 damage on Robin. And after winning that combat, the Cyclops will push himself out of combat and then run over here so that he's within 3 inches of Velius to activate with him next turn. To the treasure carrying thugs over here. This one will double move over these tracks to right here. And this one here will run off the board. And from there we go over to the other thug and he's going to open this barrel to see what's in it. So for Velius's deck he gets Queen Celestius. That is the centralized treasure token. So that pops up right there. He's only got a movement action left, so he can't actually pick it up. He'll just stand there. Now to the creature phase. This imp over here will attack Tim. They're both plus one. And eight to eight, no damage. Neither can push out of combat. Initiative for the next round. We've got one against four. So Vilius is going first. Vilius here will activate with the infantry cyclops, and he'll start by sending him up this ladder over here to engage Bedivere on a double move. Then Velius will cast Heal on the Shadow Warrior. Casting on a 12. Failure by 7. Takes one more point of damage. Velius will then be bold and run over here. And he can just get into combat with Sir Robin on his single move. Over to King Arthur. He will run through here on a single move. And from there, he's going to attempt to cast some lovely filth right over here. He casts mud on an eight, and he got that. So there's the mud to maybe give them some help from enemies coming towards them that way. Next to Sir Bedivere, he is just gonna turn around and attack that thug. Bedivere is a plus three, and so is the infantry cyclops. We've got four for Bedivere, but 15 for the Cyclops with plus two damage. Even though we, it's not depicted on him, Sir Bedivere's carrying a two-handed sword, so no staff to reduce damage, but that's still seven points of damage. He only had six health, so he goes down. For Velius' soldiers, he'll start with this thug that will pick up this centralized treasure token, and on a single half move can get off the side of the board, securing the central treasure, treasure token. Then over here to this side of the table, this treasure carrying thug over here will run off the table. And I did just double check the, uh, the rules to make sure that they can leave off their opponent's table edge. In the first edition, you could not carry treasure off your opponent's uh, starting edge, but that is not listed in the rules for the second edition. Over here, this shadow warrior will uh, run over here to add some extra support against Brave Sir Robin, that is on a double move. Then the bear will attack with double support. It's a plus eight against plus three. That is a 27 against 19. So Brave Sir Robin, he was quite brave there fighting off all these guys. Not only did he fight these guys, he was fighting that Cyclops earlier. So maybe he's brave after all. The bear will then move six inches right over to here right at the edge of the mud. And this wounded shadow warrior will run over here on a single move. The Cyclops wants to stop the Black Knight but can't quite get there. He'll run over here, climb part way down this ladder, then drop the rest of the way for his movement. Then to King Arthur's team, the Black Knight will run off the board with this treasure token. Then up front here, Tim the Enchanter will attack this imp. It's a plus one against plus one. Uh, the imp got a 15, 11 armor plus a staff that is 3 damage against Tim. Then over to Sir Lancelot, he is going to open up that treasure chest and he draws card. Hey, he also gets Queen Celestia, so they get a centralized treasure token on the board as well. So there's that treasure token. Now it'll be a race to see if they can get that off the board before they get overrun by all these other soldiers. To the creature phase, this imp will attack Tim, plus one against plus one. And uh, Tim gets an 18. 
With the staff, that is seven damage, and that takes out that imp, giving them five experience points. We'll roll initiative. We've got uh, 12 for Velius against three for Arthur. Velius will activate with the Shadow Warrior, and the Shadow Warrior will start out by double moving over to here. Then Velius will pick up this treasure token and move three inches this way. King Arthur down here wants to launch a grenade at these guys, but can't quite see an angle where he can get them both, so he is going to run up, climb up on this, and from there he will launch a grenade right in between those two. Casting on a 10, failure by six, He's gonna go ahead and empower that, putting him down to five health. Against the bear, it's a plus three, but he moved, so the uh, bear gets a plus five total. Uh, that's a 14 against 11, so that does hit the bear for two points of damage. The bear is at six, and now for the shadow warrior, plus six against plus three, and it defends that. That shadow warrior is wounded, so it's only plus four actually, but he still blocks it to Velius's soldier phase, since there's no apprentices on the table. This bear will run across this. It's gonna take most of its movement to get over there. It can get right to there on its double move. And then this shadow warrior will do the same. It's gonna end up stuck kind of in the middle since it can only do a single move. And Velius's last soldier is his infantry cyclops back here that will double move right over here, nine movement units. Then we will go to King Arthur's soldier phase. Sir Lancelot will pick up that centralized treasure token and start running. So he can only get to, well, unless he moves the ground with him, to right here. Tim the tracker will run over here on a single move. And from there, he's got a straight shot at the bear. Uh, this will be one piece of intervening terrain. So the bear is a plus four, but Tim moved, and there's one piece of intervening terrain, but it's a large creature, so it all balances out to just a plus four against the plus two shoot. And that is an 18, which deals six points of damage, and he takes out the bear. Nice shot. Tim the Enchanter launches a fireball at that bear. That was a short turn, but now we're going to the eighth and final turn, since I'm lim limiting my games to eight turns now. And for initiative, we've got Velius going first. Velius will start out by casting Leap on that Shadow Warrior. Casting on an eight, he got that. And this Shadow Warrior will get leaped right over here next, <laughs> next to Sir Lancelot. So as soon as Lancelot moves, they will be in combat. Velius, since he's carrying this treasure, uh, he wants to make sure they get this treasure. So he's just gonna run around this edge here. To right there, he doesn't want to be in line of sight of Tim, and hopefully he won't get any grenades thrown at him. For Arthur, since the Shadow Warrior is not in combat, he's gonna to toss a grenade over here to hit just the Shadow Warrior. Casting on a 10, failure by seven. He'll take one point of damage for a failure. Then King Arthur will actually run down here to get into combat with this Shadow Warrior so that it cannot snap into combat with Sir Lancelot. For the soldier phase, starting with Vilius' soldiers, this infantry cyclops on nine inches can actually get right into combat with Sir Lancelot. And the other shadow warrior on a double move can run around here and end his turn right by that cart. Now to King Arthur's turn, we'll have the Enchanter Tim cast well cast a fireball, fire an arrow at that shadow warrior. This will be a plus two against plus five. And that's an 18. That is six damage. And that shadow warrior was down to five, so it goes down. Tim's doing pretty good over here. He shot down two tough enemies and taken out that imp. Now the only figure left to go here on the board is Sir Lancelot. And with my eight turn limit, what I'm doing for my rules is that any figures that are carrying treasures will automatically get those unless they're in combat. And then I'm gonna have those two figures fight it out. 
So in this case, if Sir Lancelot ends up winning and he's carrying the treasure, he'll keep it. If the Cyclops would end up winning, the uh, treasure token is sitting on the board unclaimed, so they could potentially get that, but not necessarily. He won't automatically pick it up. So that is why Sir Lancelot will use his action to go ahead and attack the Cyclops. So Lancelot is a plus four and the Cyclops is a plus three. Lancelot gets a 15 with plus two damage. So that is seven damage. The Cyclops had uh, eight health, so it's not defeated, but it's pushed out of combat. And then at this point, since Sir Lancelot is not engaged with anybody, at the end of this round, the game would be over. So Sir Lancelot would, in fact, keep that centralized treasure token to claim as theirs. And I'll have to say that King Arthur's team probably lucked out with his eight turn limit uh, because they, there's a good chance they wouldn't have made it off the board with that treasure token or with both Arthur and Lancelot alive. And since Velius over here is carrying a treasure, he'll automatically acquire that as well as two other regular treasure tokens he found and the centralized treasure token that their warband found. And King Arthur found one other treasure as well as that centralized token. These three members of King Arthur's team did a pretty good job. Uh, Sir Lancelot took out a ranger and was able to find uh, the centralized treasure token in one of those treasure chests. King Arthur took out a ranger and lobbed a lot of grenades. And Tim the Enchanter took out three enemies, an imp, a major demon, and the bear. And they ended up coming out with uh, one treasure token that the Black Knight carried off the table, but they do have a fair number of casualties. So starting with Patsy the Thief, he is fine. The Rabbit of Carbonog is fine. Sir Galahad the Man of Arms is also fine. The Bard is dead. That'll be expensive. Brave Sir Robin the Treasure Hunter is fine. And Sir Bedivere the Apprentice gets a seven. A seven is a close call, which late in the game can be pretty bad if they've got a lot of magical items, they lose them all. Luckily he has none, so really nothing bad happens there at all. For after game spells, they'll try to cast right scroll on a 16. Both Arthur and Sir Bedivere will try to make scrolls of possess. 16 for Arthur, no, and Bedivere with a minus two, no scrolls. For experience points, Arthur gets 40 participation points, 30 for six filled spells that cause them damage, 70 for seven successful spells, five for defeating that imp, uh, 80 for two treasure tokens for a total of 225, plus their 105 existing is 330. They'll use 200 of that to increase their ability to cast possess and increase their health by one, leaving them with 130 banked experience points. For their experience points, we'll start with the centralized treasure token. They get a 17. 17 is 60 gold crowns and a grimoire. They could opt to re-roll that, but they could use some more grimoires, so they'll hold on to that. And their other treasure token is a six. A six is 20 gold crowns and a scroll. For their grimoire, this will be a cross and this will be down. You got nine and 17. 9 and 17 is a grimoire of fool's gold from the illusionist school. And for their scroll, same thing with the dice. 7 across and 12 down. So that is a scroll of fog. Too bad that's not their grimoire because that's from their school. So all together they found 80 gold crowns. They had 60 saved up and they get 20 after every battle for their brewery. So 160 gold crowns. With their Carrier Pigeon discount, they will spend 90 to hire, to hire a new bard, essentially. Uh, and they'll have 70 gold crowns left over. They gave their Scroll of Fog to Sir Bedivere back there. And they'll just store that grimoire of Fool's Gold in their vault. And the Black Beast of Arg has returned for their next battle. Even though only four of Velius's soldiers made it off the board with him, they were able to pull off four treasure tokens, one of which was a centralized treasure token. And I think the real key to their success was those greater shadow warriors that they were able to summon and keep alive. But it might cost them as they lost two expensive soldiers, their bear that they seem to have trouble summoning, and Celia fell. So let's see how these guys do. Ranger number one is fine. Ranger number two is fine. The bear is badly wounded and Celia gets a five. 
So Celia is badly wounded, so she's going to have to pay 150 gold crowns for medical treatment or sit out their next battle. Velius has no after-game spells, so for experience he gets 40 participation points, 15 for 3 failed spells that cause damage, 80 for 8 successful spells cast, he defeated no monsters, they retrieved 4 treasure tokens for 160, for a total of 295 experience points, combined with 140 they had saved up, it gives them 435, they'll use 100 to increase their health by 1, 100 to increase the summon demon spell, and it leaves them with 235 experience points banked. Their only grimoire is Circle of Protection, which they're not wanting at this point. One thing I want to point out is that Velius's Summon Demon spell is now down to an 8. That means that with the minimum casting number rule, any successful roll of that will be bumped up to a 14, which means he will always pass it by 6 if he successfully casts the spell. And a 6 means that instead of an Imp, he will always get at least a Minor Demon or Minor Shadow Warrior. So uh, that's one neat strategy you can do if you can get this spell down to an 8. For their treasure token, starting with their centralized token, they get a 16. A 16 is 40 gold crowns and a grimoire. They could re-roll this, but they want to get some grimoires, so they'll keep that. And for their other three treasures, they get a 20, a 19, and we'll re-roll that one. <laughs> a 15. So now he is going to be rolling in grimoires with 20 gold crowns and a grimoire. 100 gold crowns in a grimoire, and 120 gold crowns in a grimoire. For the grimoires, this will be a cross, and this will be down. 12 and 11 is a grimoire of steel health from the Necromancer School. 7 and 11 is a grimoire of spell eater from the Necromancer School, and he already knows that, so he can sell that. 20 and 16 is a grimoire of the bridge spell. For the last one, 3 and 17 is a grimoire of blink from the illusionist school. With their grimoires, they might eventually end up using the steel health grimoire. The bridge grimoire is from their opposed school and blink is from a neutral one, so maybe not, but uh, they can sell the spell eater grimoire for 200. They found a total of 280 gold crowns, then plus the 200 there, and the uh, 20 that they had in their vault, they've got 500. They have to use 150 of that to heal the wounded Celia. They're going to spend 250 to buy a crystal ball to give them plus one to their casting rolls for a reveal secret, and they're going to hire two infantrymen. So one of their infantrymen will replace one of their thugs, and the other will be a new hire to replace their injured bear. They're going to go and kick him out of the party. And their marksman who was wounded after the last battle is back into their group. So they are ready to head into the frozen city again. This scenario was interesting. The best strategy for placing the marker tokens at the beginning of the game is to place them on your side of the table so your opponent has to run past the halfway point to get to them. And once they do get to them, their figures are likely spread out across the table, and if they find a central treasure token, they aren't in a good position often to actually secure that and get it off the board without being bombarded by their enemy, who can then steal the treasure token. And because of this, I think that a strategy focused on pure power will shine in this scenario. I think this scenario would be fun in a four-player game, all the table edges would be player edges, so none of the markers could be within 8 inches of any of the table ed edges, which would just pile them all up in the middle, and would cause all the soldiers to pile up in the middle as well, which would be just total chaos. I'd probably only recommend it for experienced players though, as it would probably get a little confusing trying to keep track of all the lock boxes and all the combats. In my battle though, Velius' warband, despite retrieving 4 treasure tokens, didn't really find that much in them. They lost their bear, and they were able to hire two new infantrymen, but their big achievement was that they were able to lower the casting number of Summon Demon down to 8, which will help them get more minor Shadow Warriors. The Knights of the Round Table, meanwhile, just seemed outclassed most of the battle. Usually they're able to possess their Rabbit of Carbonog, but they failed casting that twice, and they were forced to just kind of launch grenades, and many of those never really hit their mark. For their next battle, they do have their Black Beast of Arg back, so that could be beneficial for them. 
Next up will be the Steam Vent scenario. If you notice any rules I got wrong or have any questions about my gameplay, let me know in the comments below as my goal with these videos is to create an accurate representation of how to play Frostgrave 2nd Edition. I want to thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to click like, add a comment, or subscribe so you can keep up with all the content that I'm releasing. And with that, I'm Alan with Bricks and Blocks Gaming, and I'll see you on the next video. Thank you.